we're going to kind of do a walkthrough here of project two, which is the conversion project using carbon emissions. So you will find this in your course and you will notice that um, we're going to start here with spreadsheet one. And yes, it's spreadsheet one because you will see later there is a spreadsheet two. So thinking about in Excel, notice how I've labeled this spreadsheet one. You're going to do some business in Excel. And what business are you going to do? Well, let's look at it. So notice how it says here you will be graded on the use of your formulas. So please make sure you are using formulas and cell references in Excel. You want to make sure you're labeling things so it's very easy to see what we're talking about. Name your spreadsheet, spreadsheet one, something like that, and make sure your name is on it. Okay, now what is the project actually doing? Well, we're going to list six appliances that you use on a regular basis and four energy vampires. Remember, energy vampires are things that are plugged in but not on. You're going to need to use page 102 and 103 in your, um, in your book to find out the wattage usage for these appliances. So you might want to use that page or those pages to pick your appliances right? because you'll know what the wattages are. Now, here in the next one, notice how it says you're going to use your estimate of daily hours. Don't sit there and just, you know, try to count up. You're estimating how many hours a day do you use your dryer. If you use, do one load of laundry a day, maybe you're averaging an hour a day. You know, just figure it out. And you can kind of think about, okay, over the course of a week, I use it 25 hours. Well, so daily, that's about maybe three and a half. You're estimating. Don't get too picky with it. Just estimate. And then the key words here, you're using formulas in Excel. So think about how we calculated CO2 usage by hand. If you can think through that factor label method that we did by hand, you're going to just input that into Excel. So look at your notes in your book of how we did it by hand, and then you can just throw it right up into that sheet in Excel. The second part of your spreadsheet is gasoline consumption. So if you're driving, how many miles do you drive? And you can figure it out either daily or weekly, whatever you'd like. And what is your fuel efficiency? If you don't know how many miles per gallon your car gets or truck, whatever you drive, you can Google it, okay? Um, or use this website, but just, you know, I drive a 2009 Ford Focus. Great. What is the general MPGs for that? Again, you're going to use Excel formulas to, est um, to figure out this information. Everything should be uh, formula driven. Once you have your electricity and your gasoline consumption figured, you're going to calculate your total pounds of CO2, again, using formulas, and you're going to estimate the cost of each. So you'll use 15 cents per kilowatt hour for power, and for gas, you're going to use whatever you've seen recently at the pump. So if I was doing it today, I'd probably use 245 because that's what I saw on my way to work. Um, so everybody's might be a little bit differently depending on where you were and what you saw and total cost so that's your electricity and gasoline together again you're going to label it and you're going to use formulas okay now spreadsheet 2 is where we're going to do a reduction in co2 so let me talk about how you're going to find spreadsheet 2 all right so if you have excel and you have things on this first page okay first thing i want to talk about is let's say that we talk about formulas if i want to multiply these two numbers together, I can type in equals this cell times this cell, right? We all should be at least a little bit familiar with formulas in Excel. Well, the nice thing about this, I want to also multiply these two numbers and these two numbers and these two numbers. So if you see this little green box down here, if I just double click on that, it will automatically use the same formula. You can see the formulas up here, right? Oh, crap, whatever. So you can notice that for each one of these, A2 times B2, A3 times B3, A4 times B4, A5 times B5. So that allows you to just autofill using the same formula. That may or may not make your life easier. Okay, now, how to use the second spreadsheet. So we want all of this same information. So notice I started, let me do that again. I just clicked on this first, column A or cell A1, I click and drag to highlight everything on here. And then I'm going to copy it. So I'm just going to copy. You can see the nice rotation there. Down here next to this spreadsheet one, there's a plus sign. This is going to add a second spreadsheet and I can just control V, copy paste. And this will allow me to say, okay, I'm going to cut this from 25 
to 10. And notice how when I click enter, it will auto populated that 20 because of the formula that was in there. And then if you want to label this, you just double click on sheet two and you can, um, you can name it anything, right? But then I would say, okay, this is what I changed. Notice this orange bucket or yellow bucket, excuse me, I can highlight. Highlighting your changes is good. That way when I'm looking from spreadsheet one to spreadsheet two, it's easy for me to see what you changed. It's easier for grading purposes. All right, so spreadsheet two, that's how you get to spreadsheet two. You're gonna copy spreadsheet one into a second spreadsheet, and then you're going to follow these directions and think about reducing your CO2. Where can you cut back? And it's going to be very important um, that so you want to highlight your changes, but make sure as you're making these changes, you make little notes maybe on a scrap paper next to you because you're going to write a paper and you need to talk about your plan. What was your strategy to reduce your CO2 footprint? So you're, you can't just, you know, oh, I'm trying to make these changes. The numbers look good and then think you're done because you have to talk about it and you want to be specific. I went from doing seven loads of laundry a week to six because I'm just going to rewear my jeans instead of washing them every time or whatever you choose to do. Um, is your plan feasible? If you say, well, I'm going to unplug my refrigerator, that is not a feasible plan. Okay, um, so these are the what you need to cover in your reflection paper. So, you know, think of that as your rubric for your paper. All of these um, bold face pieces are kind of the rubric, your, your, these bullets for this, the Excel portion. So you want to make sure that you really talk uh, well about those things. You know, go through and make sure you hit everything. This last page is just kind of a worksheet kind of a thought process. Um, you might use this, you might not. It's a good way to just organize your information. And then your pro project checklist. Before you turn it in, make sure all of these are hit. If you have all of these, it's going to be a whole lot better for you when it comes to um, being graded. And my classes, uh, just like with the first project, I will check over your Excel document as you go if you need feedback, um, but make sure you send that to me in a timely manner so I can give you appropriate feedback before you start writing your paper. So that's kind of a walkthrough in project two, just a basic what it is and what you can expect. If you have questions, of course, go ahead and reach out to your instructor. Thanks.